May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. January 19, 2024 Friday of the Second Week in Ordinary Time A reading from the first book of Samuel. Therefore Saul, taking three thousand elect men from all of Israel, traveled in order to search for David and his men, even upon the most broken rocks, which are passable only to mountain goats. And he arrived at the sheepfolds, which presented themselves along the way. And a cave was in that place, which Saul entered, so that he might ease his bowels. But David and his men were hiding in the interior part of the cave. And the servants of David said to him, Behold the day, about which the Lord said to you, I will deliver your enemy to you, so that you may do to him as it will be pleasing in your eyes. Then David rose up, and he quietly cut off the edge of Saul's cloak. After this, his own heart struck David, because he had cut off the edge of Saul's cloak. And he said to his men, May the Lord be gracious to me, lest I do this thing to my Lord, the Christ of the Lord, so that I lay my hand upon him. For he is the Christ of the Lord. And David restrained his men with his words, and he would not permit them to rise up against Saul. And so Saul, going out of the cave, continued to undertake his journey. Then David also rose up after him. And departing from the cave, he cried out behind the back of Saul, saying, My Lord, the King. And Saul looked behind him. And David, bowing himself face down to the ground, reverenced. And he said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men who say, David seeks evil against you? Behold, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord has delivered you into my hand in the cave. And I thought that I might kill you. But my eye has spared you. For I said, I will not extend my hand against my Lord, for he is the Christ of the Lord. Moreover, see and know, O my father, the edge of your cloak in my hand. For though I cut off the top of your cloak, I was not willing to extend my hand against you. Turn your soul and see that there is no evil in my hand, nor any iniquity or sin against you. Yet you lie in wait for my life, so that you may take it away. May the Lord judge between me and you. And may the Lord vindicate me from you. But my hand will not be against you. So too, it is said in the ancient proverb, from the impious, impiety will go forth. Therefore, my hand will not be upon you. Whom are you pursuing, O King of Israel? Whom are you pursuing? You are pursuing a dead dog, a single flea. May the Lord be the judge, and may he judge between me and you. And may he see and judge my case, and rescue me from your hand. And when David had completed speaking words in this way to Saul, Saul said, Could this be your voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice, and he wept. And he said to David, You are more just than I am. For you have distributed good to me, but I have repaid evil to you. And you have revealed this day the good that you have done for me, how the Lord delivered me into your hand, but you did not kill me. For who, when he will have found his enemy, will release him along a good path? So may the Lord repay you for this good turn, because you have acted on my behalf this day. And now I know certainly that you shall be king, and you shall have the kingdom of Israel in your hand. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, for my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will hope until iniquity passes away. 
Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. I will cry to God the Most High, to God who has done good to me. He has sent from heaven and delivered me, he has made those who trod upon me a reproach. God has sent his mercy and his truth. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory above all the earth. For your mercy is magnified even to the heavens, and your truth unto the clouds. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And ascending onto a mountain, he called to himself those whom he willed, and they came to him. And he acted so that the twelve would be with him, and so that he might send them out to preach. And he gave them authority to cure infirmities, and to cast out demons, and he imposed on Simon the name Peter, and also he imposed on James of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, the name Bonerges, that is, sons of thunder, and Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How can your words and actions today contribute to spreading the goodness of the Gospel and countering negativity in the world around you? He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him and he might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. Mark 3 verses 14 to 15 The twelve apostles were first called by Jesus and then sent to preach with authority. The authority they were given was for the purpose of driving out demons. But how did they do that? It's interesting to note that the authority they were given over demons was in part associated with their commission to preach. And though there are some recorded instances in the scriptures of the apostles driving out demons directly by command, it should also be understood that the preaching of the gospel with the authority of Christ has a direct effect of driving out demons. Demons are fallen angels. But even in their fallen state, they retain the natural powers they have, such as the power of influence and suggestion. They seek to communicate with us to deceive us and draw us away from Christ. The good angels, of course, also exercise this same natural power for our good. Our guardian angels, for example, constantly seek to communicate to us the truths of God and His grace. The angelic battle for good and evil is real, and as Christians, we must be aware of this reality. One of the greatest ways to confront Satan and his demons is to listen to the truth and to proclaim it with the authority of Christ. Though the apostles were given a special authority for their preaching, every Christian, by virtue of their baptism and confirmation, is entrusted with the message of the gospel to proclaim in various ways. And with that authority, we must constantly strive to bring forth the kingdom of God. Doing so, will have a direct impact on the diminishment of the kingdom of Satan. Reflect today, upon your duty to share the gospel with others. Sometimes, this is done by an explicit sharing of the message of Jesus Christ, and at other times, the message is shared more by our actions and virtue. But every Christian is entrusted with this mission and must learn to fulfill that mission with true authority, knowing that, as that authority from Christ is exercised, the kingdom of God increases and the activity of the evil one is overcome. Let us pray. My all-powerful Lord, I thank you for the grace you have given me to proclaim the truth of your saving message to those whom I encounter every day. 
Help me to fulfill my mission, to preach in both word and deed, and to do so with the gentle yet powerful authority given me by you. I offer myself to your service, dear Lord. Do with me as you will. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.